Hello again, everybody. I want to welcome you to Wednesday in the Word. I'm Steve Eden, senior pastor here at Grace Church in Choctaw. My guest, back by popular demand, <laughs> is Matt Bacon, uh, one of our worship co-leaders here at Grace Church. Matt, how you doing? Good, good. Yeah, doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming back on. I want to share a couple of scriptures uh, before we get into to talking, and you guys will understand why I'm reading these. So Colossians 1, 15, Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and earth, visible and invisible. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist or are held together. Then Colossians 1, 27, to the saints God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And then one other passage, Ephesians chapter 3, starting with verse 18. Let's see. That, uh, Paul's praying that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. So one of the things, Matt, we were talking about before we came on is just how God makes himself great mm -hmm. in and through us. We talk a lot about Christ in the believer and the hope of glory and all those things. But rather than make us great right. apart from himself, he has ensured that any greatness we have is his greatness in and through us. So right. let's talk a little bit and share with them a little bit on what that looks like, what you were seeing. Yeah, so, I mean, I think we all can hopefully uh, admit to trying to be self-sufficient. Yeah. Uh, whether it's with our sins or our accolades. finances or our yeah. accolades mm -hmm. or, and then how easily the enemy can spin that on us for self-praise yeah. or self-exaltation or self-reliance that right. you don't need. See, you don't need yeah, God. you don't need God. You because, can do this on your own. Yeah, goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Right. And what I thought was interesting uh, when you first brought this concept to me is that God makes himself great in us rather than makes us great apart from himself. Right. Because honestly, we can't handle it. No. If you look at men or women over the course of history that have, uh, I would say, fallen prey mm. to stardom. Yeah or greatness, or, you know, whatever they feel like they're deriving independent of God, it right. pretty much slays them. I right. mean, they'll, uh, how many rock stars have we seen take their own life? Oh, yeah. Uh, how many times have they talked about how endlessly unhappy yeah. that they are? Man's just not made to be the center. We're not no. made for all the glory in and of ourselves. Right. Well, yeah. and then people exploit those things in us yeah. that are fallen to the same evil that we were so hardly trying to get away from right. you know we want to feel needed love appreciated uh whenever it's honestly people just using us yeah you know and it's not True. most of the time it's not as intentional as we think i mm -hmm. think it's just other misguided people misguiding Abs yeah, others sure. you know and so when you become self-reliant you become self-sufficient you act out of sin mm -hmm. sin is selfishness right you it's know, certainly it self doesn't bring honor to god and and that's the real thing where I really, you know, flipped my learning was, is what we're doing or I'm doing, thinking, feeling, emotions, uh, is it honoring God? Mm -hmm. That's pretty easy. Yeah. It's not like there's a book that we, you know, a 40-page <laughs> book with all the answers of pleasing God. Yeah. The Bible tells us very clearly how to please Him. Yeah. You know, and the biggest thing is knowing Him. Yeah. And that's to me, right. the critical part in that is when you know Him, you don't want to disappoint Him. That's right. And you don't want to live independent right. of him. I do think that we've talked about before, uh, the standard is not other people. Right. A pride in those things enter in self-righteousness, if you will, enters in when we're comparing ourselves to others when the comparison is really Christ. Right. And when uh, 
we discover who he really is. We get right. to know him. It's like, man, I don't want to do anything apart from him. I'm reminded of John 15, 5. He said, apart from me, honestly, you can do nothing right. of eternal value. You right. can do some things, but there's no eternal yeah. value to it. And it's so obvious. I mean, we look around the world today, and I don't watch the news anymore or mm. try to stay off all social media stuff. Yeah. Just from the influx of lies. In endless rhetoric. It's just a never-ending right. turnover mm. of things that people think are important. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it breaks my heart a lot paying more attention these days as I am to things going on around me, in me, for my family, but for my friends, for the church body, you know, right. of of critical behavior or, or thinking that is bad for us. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think we really understand everything that's bad for us. Absolutely. Until we completely right. tell God... You have permission here. Right. I'm giving you all of this. Mm-hmm. You know, use me for your glory. Yeah. And that brings such a big light on the bad, yeah. the things we're doing poorly or, or that we haven't given him. You know? If we don't have him and we don't have his insight and wisdom, and we're not looking through his lens, we're looking through our own. We're at the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yeah. We're in human reasoning and we're headed for you know, disaster right. in a hurry because he didn't make life for us to be independent from him. Yeah. That was the point of Colossians 1, that everything is made by him and for him. Right. We were talking before uh, we came on how Christ in you, Colossians 1, 1 the mystery of the gospel. Why is it a mystery? It's a mystery because God built into the program of life mm. That we can't see truth, we can't know him, we can't experience real life apart from him. That man would need God in order to discern truth and really discover what life was about. Well, and if we didn't have God, there would be no balance. There would be no good and evil. There would be no yeah. check, you know. Yeah. I mean, most, most we'd all just do whatever we thought our own. There would be was. no wrong. There'd be no right. <laughs> and who could argue that? You know? Isn't that the case, though? And I don't want to get on my soapbox here, but <laughs> when when they've tried to eliminate truth in our country and just said truth is relative, it's whatever you want it to yeah. be. Well, who's to say Putin right now, who's invading the Ukraine and killing people and taking their stuff, that he's not just doing what's truth to him? He thinks right. it's what's best for him and his country, so he's doing it. That's the yeah. problem if you take God out of it yeah. as the moral law and the standard we all live by. Well, then there is no standard yeah. other than who are you to tell me I can't do what I think is right, right. for me. Well, that was that was the disciples. That was the apostles. That was their whole life goal was to you're trying to remove God from this, and I'm trying to make you see him Yeah, and know him. Right. You know, I mean, that's the whole point in our, of our leadership. And that's why it's so critical that we really pray for everyone, um, for them to have a knowing of God and for him just to make himself just wreck them, you know? Yeah. Because uh, guys like Putin, they're they're one in a million mm-hmm. in the sense of the way we recognize them. They're still people. Right. They still have real issues. They're under the same, you know, God that we're under. Yeah. They've just chosen... The harder way, yeah. the broad path. The broad path, their own path, way. right? Yeah, and Their own wisdom and rationale. That's why I like what you said, that God has to be the pillar, that, right. you know, the, the course corrector for all of us, or we're just left to our own devices. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things that we had mentioned, that even though the gospel is hidden, you know, he like in Matthew 13 talks about treasure hidden in a field, mm-hmm. right? So it is a mystery and it's hidden, but it's not hidden from us. It's hidden for us to find. Uh, Jesus said, hey, ask, yeah. ask and you'll receive, seek and you'll find, knock and it'll be opened unto you. But there needs to be humility on man's part right. to acknowledge that I'm getting nowhere apart from God. And that includes I'm not even going to see God, no God or no truth, yeah. apart from him showing it to me. And you, you mentioned this before we came on. Why did Jesus teach in parables? They asked him that question. He said, well, so that seeing they won't see, hearing they won't hear, yeah. and with their heart they won't be able to perceive what unless they're poor enough to say, you know what, I need God. I need to look for him. It's so critical. And then they'll find him. When you finally run out of options and you're saying, I'm, I'm just ready to let God work in me and mm-hmm. move in me and not, now I'm going to do it. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's, it's a revelation that I hope we all experience. Um, yeah. Because it's so critical. It changes everything. Mm-hmm. You know, we're still subject to things. 
Um, I still struggle, even though I've made a, yeah. a drastic change in my life to, you know, be different right. and right. show difference. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have the answer. Yeah. And it's a choice. It's discipline. Um, that, that's the that's the fortunate thing is we've got that anchor now. We've got that plumb line. I'm a work in progress, too. Yeah. We're all uh, trying to live out what we've already been given. Right. You know, in Christ, in my spirit, your spirit, we're in union. Yeah. Thank you for that, Lord. That's our starting point. Yes. But now he's going to work on our soul, our body, that we would all be conformed to his image. Yeah. And when we stumble, we go we go back to the plumb line, to the anchor, and let him rebuild from yeah. where we were. To me, it's such a noise reduction is the way I look at it. Like, in a work environment that I'm in, it's very noisy. Mm-hmm. And I, when I leave, sometimes I'm just like, oh, thank yeah. goodness I'm out of there, you know. Well, God brings the calmness, the stillness. He brings the chaos down, the noise down when you let him. That's right. You know, what are you caught up in? What are we paying attention to? What are we letting feed us? Mm-hmm. You know, I find it very disturbing these days that we were focused on a court trial between two actors. <laughs> you know, whenever right. we got wars and, and, and rumors of wars and uh-huh. people starving and dying and everybody's talking about what Johnny Depp and, you know, someone's doing. It's yeah. like, yeah. what are we? we have- we've lost sight. We have shootings going on. We got, you know, and I have a good friend, and she she goes to church here, uh, Elizabeth Billingsley. But she says all the time, you know, on social media and stuff, that America is heart sick. The real issue Mm -hmm. is the heart of uh, the people within America, and it just seems like I follow your frustration because it seems like they're always willing to put up distractions in front of us, anything to keep us, you know, attracted to white noise. Basically, it's just a deterrent. You know, and it, it's it's our choice. We get to choose what we're influenced by or, or what mm-hmm. we talk about or what we think. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a choice. God gives us that choice freely. Yeah. You know. I think it's been good and sobering here at the church, and we've talked about it some at the, the biblical elder study that, that we do together. Right. That I think there's people within the church that are like, man, I'm I'm tired of keeping my eyeballs on the world. I'm tired of yeah. always looking at TV and social media for information. There's no truth in it. Right. Uh, truth comes from God. Right. So you had uh, you got some great statements there that you brought that we can discuss. You want to throw one of those out there, and we'll address it. Yeah. So a lot of it comes just from the glory of God's written or brought up a lot in, mm-hmm. in there. And I struggled understanding the full meaning of that um, just because of all the different scenarios that we experience as human beings, you know, but uh, whenever I had heard it this way of the glory of God in the sense of it helps us be less self Mm-hmm. You know, it's for our, it's for his glory and not Instead for our self glory. Sure. Right. Um, that made such a shift in my perspective of thinking because he makes us great because mm-hmm. he is great. Yeah. You know, not him making us great so we can go be great and then we don't need him anymore. Yeah. Because right. hey, we're great now. You know, and and how yeah, the enemy wants to do that. <laughs> right. Well, and he gave us the Holy Spirit. You know, I got Romans five five. Here and now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Yeah, I mean, that's the only news media, social media, the only person you need, yeah, being in you is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the your discernment will go way up. Oh, yeah, your your love for people, which you know, I've struggled in the environment that I was raised in with my dad, Mm -hmm. being my I looked up to him, so I followed everything he did. I did. A lot of what he did said a lot of what he said, you know, and whenever you're living detached from God and the Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. you have, it changes everything. You become Mm -hmm. self-based, sin-based. You don't become, hey, this is wrong because you didn't know it was wrong. Right. Well, the Holy Spirit and, and God teach us what is right and wrong. Yeah. And that's so applicable, especially you look at the climate today in the world. It's more prominent, and it's just getting worse. So if you look at the life of Jesus Christ, and we always say all the time that Jesus is perfect theology. Here's Jesus Christ, fully God, Mm -hmm. but he's also fully man. Mm -hmm. He says he's the way, the truth, and the life. So he's the way we're designed to live, the truth about us, uh, the life that's to be expressed and manifest through these mortal bodies. Did he self-exalt or did he self-abdicate? 
Yeah, he's self advocated. Yeah, he abdicated lordship of his own life to his yeah. father, and he's the pattern son. Right. And so what we see in him is how we're all designed to live, and right. that's exactly what you were bringing to me is that. Uh, in this thought is that we're not made to exalt ourselves. We're not made to be the end-all, be-all. Right. That job's already taken. God is right. the end-all, be-all. And we were designed to abdicate lordship of our of our own lives right. to him. You know, Jesus had prayed even in the garden, not my will, but thine will be done. Right. Uh, he taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Right. Okay, well, what is that? Well, the second explains it. Thy will be done. Right. That we're designed... Not to self-exalt, but to abdicate that rulership in our own life right. to the one who invented life and right. invented us. It just makes perfect sense. He right. knows way more than we do. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's such a drastic change in your lifestyle. A couple of guys I work with that I've been sowing into in them and mm-hmm. me, mm-hmm. Um, in the sense of we all say the days we really make an effort to not be worldly or you know self-based. It's such a different day, right? Experience-wise, right. at an environment where it's not condoned or mm-hmm. it's not noticed, or you know, worldly environment of such. Yeah. But it, you have the ability to change your environment. That's right. You know. Amen. And it comes strictly just out of obedience. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm obedient to this because it's true. Mm-hmm. You know, the truest right. thing about you is what God says about you. Right. You know, how often do we stray from that because of our feelings and emotions? Mm-hmm. They rule us. Mm-hmm. You know, I love First John four four. Now this is the Steve Eden translation, but uh, we some may know it as "Greater is He that's within you than He that's within the world." But you'll never face anything outside of you greater than who's inside of you, and so you can go into Christ has made it possible through His indwelling Spirit and His glory and His life that we don't have to be ruled by our environment. I love what you said that we can be atmospheric agents. And we can affect the tone yes. uh, and the climate of where we work or school or whatever. Yeah, and it doesn't come out of chaos or rudeness or abruptness. It, it comes out of quietness, stillness, rest. People should be drawn to us as believers because we aren't in the mix. We aren't mm-hmm. in the tide pool right. with everybody else. We're in the yeah. s- slow, steady stream, right. and we're fine with it. You mm-hmm. know, That's the, the draw that we have to get as believers, and we have to really anchor it to of knowing God and and having a relationship with him and allowing the Holy Spirit to use us because the world needs quiet men and women that are at peace with God and Mm -hmm. want to be used by him Yeah, and not people that are just fighting tooth and nail for survival. (laughs) I loved what you said the first time you had come on uh, when you said you can't let where other people are, Mm -hmm. sorry, are not, Right. Determine where you are. Right. That was a lot of your personal testimony, how you had looked at other people, situations and all that, and just thought, well. Yeah, and if you get let down or disappointed, Mm -hmm. well, now you're reset, and now you're questioning things. Right. You know, so all the progress that that God has done in you, you're immediately discrediting because somebody tripped and fell in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's just such a poor way to live. I've been studying the word father because we were talking on Sundays just here recently about right. one of the things Jesus taught was uh, our father-son relationship. Again, he's the pattern son. So we go from almighty God, G-A-W-W-W-D, they wouldn't even write his name, to Abba. Right. You know? And uh, one of the words for father, <clears throat> it does mean originator, foundation is another one. Right. Boy, I'm reminded Psalm 11.3, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Mm-hmm. I mean, but, yeah. but one of those words there is source. Right. And uh, that's what happened in your life is he became right. the source for how you're going to be and yeah. who you're going to be instead of everybody else. And it was through suffering that those came out of, not out of fun experiences, you know? Okay, how so? You mean just beating your head against the wall the other way? Yeah, well, just that, or, you know, the shortcomings, shortfalls I had as a husband and a father. Ah. Such a different lifestyle change whenever I was actually attentive to things and not so self-reliant. Independent of Self-independent of, of, I'm just going to do it because it makes more sense if I do it when I haven't ever been able to do it. That's profound right there. I don't know if you caught it, but, but... Through so much defeat and frustration, well, it was coming because you were living life against its design. You weren't being sourced by him. You were trying to be a dad and a husband and all that independent right. of him. 
And boy, it didn't work. Yeah, it did. And and it's a lie. Yeah. You know, we, we realize it when you're at the end of your rope. And we should just get to the end of our rope now and not keep rolling <laughs> right. out more Why rope. Why wait? <laughs> yeah. yeah, quit adding to your rope. Just I get to the get end to of Get to the end it. of your yeah. rope now. Right, in the sense of just being obedient to God and the Holy Spirit and, and allowing Him. Because He's used me in ways that I would have never been able to mm-hmm. to be a part of. And that's the way I, I want to look at it, is yeah. to be a part of. Yeah, I'm not doing anything that he's not yeah. already done. Amen. And I'm allowing him to use me to do it. And I'm just glad to be in the room when these things happen. Yeah. Whether it's that. revelations or conversations or or just helping somebody right. understand somebody, something. Loving you know? somebody well. Right. That's the whole point of it. I love that. You know? That's the whole point of, of what we're doing here. But you are participating with his life. And it's right. kind of like how we started. God makes himself great in us. We right. do share in it. Yes. But boy, independent of it, that's kind of our point tonight. When we get tempted to try and live independent of our partnership with him, we're going to find distress and disruption in a hurry. Yeah, and you would be surprised what negative or sufferings God will turn for good. You know, and that's what, to me, the biggest the biggest question in life that I had never tied to Mm. that I now understand is there's. There's lessons, there's obedience, there's things to be learned in everything. Yeah. Uh, suffering. That's good. Because uh, there's so many stories out there. And the world is trying tooth and nail to keep this stuff right. covered up. That, right. Don't mm-hmm. let people find out that there's peace and quiet and, and rest <laughs> right. in God. That's right. Because then they become self uh, or non reliant on what we're offering. That's right. You know, that's why these things that are All happening the in the world are happening. Yeah. And, you know, we need. To be the light, we need to be the difference. We need to be the calm and quiet, and not the storm and the chaos. I love, I love what you're saying, though. And I want to share this, and then you can pray. But I love your point here at the end that that God wastes nothing. I don't know if you heard him say it, yeah. but everything is redeemable to our redeeming Father. And I was thinking of Psalm 126, verse five and six. It says, "He who has gone forth weeping." So that's right. challenging times difficult times was simply gathering seed for sowing yeah and you just said that the the things the frustration you found uh trying to live life on your own apart from god i mean you were saved you knew god but you were just living independent of him yeah. he has taken that and used taken it. it and it's yeah. been like i spoke the second time i was able to speak here about job and i was right. just so drawn to that and mm. i had a couple people even ask you know well god never says why he put job through all that well i think when we lose sight Mm-hmm. of the glory of God. Yeah. When we become so self-reliant on fixing all the things, it's all in the book of Job, and it, it ties more together now than when I spoke about it. Yeah. Because he was trying to do all these things to keep all these things from happening, and people's, you know, yeah. and he simply just lost his sight of his source. Yeah. You know, and what he went through isn't much different than what a lot of people go through. Mm-hmm. And you get choices. We get to make those choices of how we respond. Mm-hmm. And man, I'm so glad that Jesus responded the way he did right. and didn't just leave us to our own sin and self. You know? Romans 8, 17 and 18 talks about how we share in his glory if we're willing to share in his sufferings. Right. Those sufferings are just the lure of the flesh. You're talking about like with Job, he's trying to, he's tempted to make all this stuff right, got to make this fit. But right. there is, you know, because of the draw of the flesh, Mm-hmm. There is suffering. There is sometimes the flesh is crying out to do something. I'd yeah. really like to, you know, cold cock that guy yeah. <laughs> or give him a piece of my mind. Yeah. The flesh wants that, but the spirit refuses it. Or, We're not going to yeah. do that. And right. so, but in that sharing of contending with the flesh, we share in the glory of God yeah. and his nature. And what he wants is a relationship with us. And, you know, I, I, I've been thinking a lot about that with uh, Father's Day coming is we all want relationship with our father. Yeah. You know, and and there's no there's no better peace that we get than having a relationship with him. And whether we don't have an earthly father, or you don't know him or you're deprived of him or you're departed from him, mm-hmm. Jesus God is our father. That's right. And it doesn't Amen. change what you went through. He's not, you know, he is consistent all the time. Mm-hmm. So that's where our source should be and not out of self or or you know, Sin based. Doesn't it make sense? Like I said, one of those definitions of father is originator. We came from him. Right. It makes sense that we're going to live and abide 
and remain in him, right. that that's where we would find life. Yeah, it is. Yeah. All right, well, pray for us, brother. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we're just thankful, God, that you are just such a yes, gracious Lord. God. Lord, that we do give the glory to you. Lord, we do give the uh, trouble and, and the concern or, or things that we're not quite at peace with. Lord, we give those things to you tonight. Mm -hmm. We give mm -hmm. those to you because you're the peace, you're the provider. Lord, they're, they're nothing but noise, and we know that they are distractions from the truth. Mm -hmm. We're thankful that you're consistent with us, Lord, that you love us no matter what, and that Amen. we're just gracious that you allow us to learn, that you allow us to be molded, you allow us to develop, Lord, and that you're just so gracious with us to allow us to learn and be used so that we can be a light here. Yes. We're so grateful for you, and we love for you and for all you've done for us. In Jesus' name, Amen.